Sure. So. All right. Very good. All right, let's keep warming up. Julie, so nice to see you. It's cold here in Chicago. Can you send some of that beautiful Southern Spanish warmth to us? Okay, we would really appreciate that. I have 33 degrees here in Downers Grove, so you're not even wearing a sweater. I'm jealous. So <laughs> very good. All right, a little warm, a little more warming up. Um, let's do the vowel change. So again, eyes engaged, cheeks up, tongue flat and back, and just do the bare minimum change in tongue position to change vowels. They oh, ah. I actually like the ah vowels least of the vowels that I sing. I've never been 100% happy with my ah vowel, but I'm happier with it doing this vocalese than I am a lot of the rest of the time because I feel I feel like this situates the ah vowel nicely. It's actually one of the hardest vowels to sing well. But here we go. Breathe and day oh, ah. Check your tongue position. So the tip of your tongue should be right here resting against your bottom front teeth, and the rest of the tongue should be pretty flat most of the time. Let's uh, pick it up from here and uh, breathe and go. Hey, oh, ah. the last thing I was going to say? I had I had something brilliant that I was going to say, then I forgot it. Okay, now I remember. Good. So, um, Karen Brunson, my voice teacher, told me in a, in a, in a lesson, I, I had never quite thought about it this way, or I had heard it, but it never, for some reason, it really clicked. She said, think about the place where the breath meets the voice. And sometimes that sounds a little woo-woo to me, but but for some reason, I started trying it and something something clicked. So here's the vocalese. Let me just sing it for you. And again, the same idea where your tongue is flat and back, what we call dead and spread and back. But if you try thinking about the image of the place where the breath meets the voice, for some reason, something just started working in my voice newly, and maybe it'll help, maybe it'll do so, open up something for you, maybe not, but let's do the vocalese anyway. Here we go. Now we're going to go back up. I realize we're a little bit on the low side, especially for sopranos and tenors. Another thing that Karen says is think about touching the voice rather than pressing the voice and see if that does anything for you. Same vocal lays. We're just going to go up by half step this time. Breathe and go. engaged. Cheeks up. Regal posture.
Great. So there's one more version of this. This really has helped my singing a lot over the last year, 12, 13, 14 months. Um, so we're going to do the same vocal ease, but anytime you get to the O value, stretch it. And don't worry if you have vibrato, don't have vibrato, whatever, but you may find that your voice sort of starts to develop a little more of a natural spin in a vocalese like this. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you all, but when I heard, heard the recording of Christmas Star, I'm, I heard an extra sort of level of spin and legato and a flowing line from the aggregate group that I haven't heard before in the same way. So, and I like it. So whatever you're doing in that regard, Keep on keeping on. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let me demonstrate again. Here we go. Cheeks up. Good posture. Okay, last one. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo go. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. 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 Back up. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Engage your eyes. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Having fun yet? Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Stay on the breath. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. 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 Last one. Giggity gaggity giggity gaggity goo. Yay! Okay, have a seat. Very good. Good, good, good. All right, unmute yourselves for a moment. Oh, it's just so nice to see everybody. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, hi, Patty. Hi. Um, it's a little late in the season to suggest this, but um, would it be possible to have like a like a little YouTube video or something of you uh, doing the vocalese and uh, to practice with? Because I always forget which you know. It seems like they're so simple, and I would remember when I want to kind of warm up. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what you what we usually do, and I'm like, I remember a couple of them, but I just wondered if that right. would be something that you well, could do. I, I, yeah, thanks, Patty. What a great suggestion. I think I could clip. Um, I could I could certainly clip the front part of what we're doing now. That would probably help. Yeah, if, if yeah, that's that, yeah. If you go to our Facebook page, actually, any of the videos that Paul or I have done over the last many months, they're all there, and the first ten or fifteen minutes of those are all vocalies and so that, that's another option but um but oh, I, okay. I, I like your i like your idea um there's a lot of a lot of that content already exists so you know you could do it right away okay yeah i didn't know whether there were recordings online i just haven't looked to uh, beyond the practice right you know? yeah the nice thing about i mean even though facebook has had some technical problems lately the the really nice thing about this is that for oh. those, those those facebook live rehearsals are archived forever so if you just oh, right, I forgot Facebook yeah. slash sounds good choir. That's it's all there. So um, okay, yeah, but the, but I like your idea for this too. That that that's cool. So um, let me add that to my ever expanding to do list. So um, just a sec. Another thing that I think everyone should hopefully know is that I did a conducting video of Patapan. So if you want to have someone to watch while you're while you're recording Patapan, if you haven't recorded yet, that's you're you're certainly welcome to to, to use that as a resource. It's um there's some there's some tricky rhythms in this. So our because I know Patapan is due shortly. So I know Leslie, you're recording today, which is great. And um, so let's spend as much time on Patapan as we need to to have you feel like you're really solid on it, and then we'll spend some more time on Wexford, and um, that should take. <laughs> That should take most of the time, but um, we can uh, we can rock and roll. So I think what I want to do, unless there are any 
unless there is any unless anyone knows there's this particular thing that you know you need to work on, I want to sing Patapan through all the way through from top to bottom, probably twice. Oh, that's great, Anne. I'm glad you like taking the low notes. Um, I want to do Patapan at 90% speed just to kind of get it back into our voices. And then, we'll, then we'll do a pass at 100% speed and, um, and then take questions. That kind of, that's kind of a nice way to do it. And because my fingers are not good enough to play this piano part um, uh, with actually to play all, all the vocal parts, which is what I want to do. Um, we'll just do this with the amazing slow downer, which is so useful. Let me go ahead and mute everyone. Good. So even though this is just a slow version and we're kind of getting it back in our voices, see if you can activate your body with with rejoicing, because this is a you know, the singer's number one job is to give is to communicate emotion. I've said that many times and I'll say it again at the risk of boring you, but it's it's still true. Um, so even if you're just kind of whatever, I haven't had enough coffee, I haven't sung this piece in a couple days, um, bring, bring the joy of the text out in your being as we sing it, and you'll have a better experience, I promise you. And then we'll do it full speed, which is even more fun. So here we go from the top. This is Patapan Fantasia, full mix, all and parts, conduct. with click and counting. One, two. Great. Let's go right back to the beginning. 100% speed. Rock out. Stand up if that helps you. Otherwise, just sit up straight with regal posture, as Karen Brunson recommends. It's always good for singing to stand regally. Okay, from the top. See you at the double bar. Here this we go. is Patapan Fantasia. Full mix, all parts, with click and counting. One, two, one, two, three, four. Patapan, 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 Food and come, may the 
Yes. Dan, thank you for the choreography. We had a little uh had a little John Travolta patapan going. That was great. Good. Okay. Uh questions, problems, issues, neuroses, things that are tripping you up, don't be shy. Now is a good time to uh address anything that's not working. This is the hardest piece on the program. So um anything that you need, let me know. Yeah, Leslie, go ahead. Um well you know, we hardly ever do it at 100% speed. And so I found that, you know, I did pretty well throughout, except the, the couple of parts that, you know, were like late in the game, getting them. Uh -huh. I haven't mastered them at this speed. So, God. you know, so, you know, and, and that's partly my fault because I don't practice enough outside of this time. But, you know, the, the things that are always difficult are for altos on the bottom of page six going into seven, getting that E for play. And I know how to find it, but it just comes so fast. I just, you know, and then again, the the end, you know, I have my music marked up, you know, this is unison. Okay, parts here, you know, and it's just getting that first note, being able to see my directions and say, okay, it's parts, get the note, you know, because it's going so fast. So it's the speed, you know. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, we can certainly do a couple more passes at this speed, and then I can take questions if that's a good way to do it, just to keep it, just to keep it sort of simmering. Is anybody else at that that same point? Yeah, sure. Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it's just familiarity, and and you're right. Yeah. More questions, Patty? Did you have a question, or Myra? Uh, yeah. Um. Just the the part like the top of page five for the altos. Yep. Getting that, getting that, B, going to the B and then up that yep. note from yep. there. Yep. Getting that, getting yep. that note right is hard. I kind of lose it and then I ca catch up the next line, but right, it's hard for me to get in the right place for that yeah. one. My advice about that, Patty, is that I think the best thing you can do is if you can take you know, 20% of your brain and listen to what the tenors and basses do right before you, they actually give yeah. you a note because you're singing instruments to play. That's your note. So I realize at a faster tempo, it's a little hard to do that. Instruments to play. Et cetera. So, but that, that's where it is. Another thing, yeah. to th another thing to think about I don't know how the, I don't know how you are with intervals or with the scale, but that's that's the home that's the home pitch in your minor, and you come in on the fifth below. It's sort of a trumpet call or a shofar. You just fit instruments to play. Another way to think about it is right before you come in, the sopranos go up. And they come in an octave. The note they land on on Lou is an octave above you. I think we should probably just do it another time or two and just sort of see what that feels like. So um, let's just take it briefly from the bottom of four. The tooralu tooralu, where tenors and basses have when the man of olden days. Let's just do that section briefly, and um, then we can work on the at at full speed. Then we can work on the section that Leslie was do, talking about. So this is. Whoops, I don't want to change the speed. I want to change the time. So we're coming into the roughly the bottom of four where it says tooraloo, tooraloo. I'll give you a couple seconds from the top of the page just to get into it. Here we go. Christmas Day. 
Let's just do that again. Just that much again. Okay, sing same starting place. Top of page four. I just lose somehow I get behind and I'm not up with the everything everybody else at the very at the hey pat a pen I'm okay. kind of like a phrase behind and I don't know where where I'm getting yeah up. are you okay starting page 12 on time Patty yeah okay good yeah. that's that's what I thought so okay super so what I'm going to do is altos we're just going to have a very quick rhythmic tutorial on page 12 if anyone wants to sing your other parts or whatever you're muted so but um ten, bass tenor soprano you're up there so here we go altos top of 12 slowly one and two and here we go breath So in the bottom of the page, you have to go right on. Let's do that again, altos, a little more slowly. Top of 12, one and two and breathe and go. Breath. Okay, good. Now a little faster. One, two, here we go. Breath. Okay, now with the sopranos. Top of 12. One, two, here we go. Okay, I want everyone from the top of 10. Top of 10. Actually, that's a bad place to start. Bottom of nine. Willie, take your little drum. So let's go back there. This is a couple seconds before everyone comes in. Bot and just let's go from bottom of nine to the end, the soprano and alto. Um, the Willie. That's what we're going to do at full speed. Bottom of nine. Bottom of nine. Yeah, sometimes it zigs when you want to when you want to zag and you think you have a rest when you don't have a rest. So that's that's the hard thing about the alto line on page 12. So is that better, Patty? Good. Good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, of course. You're welcome. What else? Don't be shy. This is your time. So good. Candy, you got something? 
I do. I mean, I'm so embarrassed. This is the worst place for me. It's a top of five. Uh-huh. The soprano, the soprano line where we come in for the last run to Rulu Rulu. Yep. I can't, you know, I I come in wrong. I have it written over one, two, one, two over the rest, and right. I still come in wrong. Are you coming in on the wrong pitch or the wrong time or both? Not the, the time. Okay. The time. It's, I, there's, there shouldn't be anything irregular. I think you told us just to write one, two, one, yeah. two. I mean, this is, this come is, in. Yeah, I, yeah, good. Well, thank, thanks. We, we, can, we can work on this. I mean, the interesting thing is that this, this, is a, this is a texture. It's a very complicated texture where all the different voice parts are doing things at different times. And so we have to be super vigilant to make sure that, um, that the other parts don't throw us off. So um, Sopranos here at the top of, top of five. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the soprano line along with everybody at the bottom of four. So this is our one of our one of our convenient restart places. It's the bottom of page four when the tour lose happen. I'm going to play the soprano line all the way through page five, and maybe that will help. And if we need to do some other stuff, we can. So this is roughly the top of page four. Just come in wherever it works for you. Just that much again. Bottom of four. We're going to start playing at the top of four. Better? Did that help? It did. I think I was think I thought I was in the wrong place because the sopranos are so exposed there. Right. You know, right. so I think that was the problem. I didn't realize it was okay to be singing, you know, just because I didn't hear more people. It was you are I was in the right place. Exactly right. Yeah, that's kind of the point, which is pretty cool. I mean, but it, it is I'm glad I'm glad we talked about it because it's exactly what's going on. So right. Yeah, sometimes I, I got it. I got it now. Yay! Good. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to trust that that musical intuition, and um, yes, especially when the altos aren't singing. Sometimes, sometimes sopranos can feel a little a little unmoored. See, altos, you think you're not important, so important. So, um, I was an alto before my voice changed, you know. So I have a soft spot in my heart for altos. But Sandy, <laughs> Sandy was <laughs> Sandy was singing something in church the other day. I think it was the opening hymn. She does the 830 service here from Zoom and then and then we go over and sing in the choir at, at live for the 1015. But uh, <laughs> she was complaining to me. She was muted, you know, during this. She's like, John, like all I'm singing is, geez, this is a horrible alto part. I'm like, yeah, well, that's the life of an alto sometime. Okay, good. These are super questions. What else? What else you got? Yep. I find that I get carried away. I love this piece. I get carried away with the two little luras. And uh, just at the top of five, I want to sing with the sopranos, but I'm supposed to be having a rest and going to Patty Pad, but I find myself singing with the sopranos. I just get carried away with this piece. It's great. Well, well Joy, I just I've, have to pick my braid. Yes, Joy, I've never known you to get carried away by any, anything. So this seems highly uncharacteristic for your personality. Yeah, but, right. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's being a little sarcastic right now, isn't he? <laughs> a little in my voice, yes. So, well, it's, yeah. It, it's a, it's a great chart. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Back it's a great piece. It's a carried away with it. Julie, go ahead. Back up to that same place that um, somebody was having difficulty with on the top of five. Uh-huh. And I had trouble with that myself, too, because I wanted to hear the basses go tour and Lou, and then we start. But we have to jump on their last note. You do. Yes. So I finally got that straightened out. And then, then we were hanging on and the altos jump on our last note. <laughs> and, that, and that helped me <laughs> yeah. to hold as long as I was supposed to. Good, so, good. Yeah, and it's fast. 
So, you know, the, the brain, there's, there's a lot of stuff we have to track with. So good. Anything else? Tenors and basses, I know your part is, 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 is a little more straightforward than the sopranos and altos, which is sometimes a nice thing. But if there's any questions, any issues, you know, don't be shy. Okay, one more time from the top, full speed, stand up as you're able, thing with feeling, all that good stuff. You know, zippity doo dah, Jesus is born, we need to rejoice. So, um, so bring your emotional A game as if we're actually having a performance and there's, you know, throngs of people coming to hear you. They're so excited. You know, they come to see your face as much as they do to hear your voice. I hope you know that. So um, not, not to put any pressure on you when you're recording yourselves, but um, you do, you, that, that's that wonderful saying, if you're having a good time, why don't you notify your face? This is, the, this is the time to do that. So here we go from the beginning. This is Patapan Fantasia, full mix, all parts with click and counting. One, two, one, two, three, four. Pan, pata 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 pan, Yes, very good. And I'm going to maybe not get to it. Until, this is oh, Patapan Fantasia. Stop, Paul. Stop. Full mix, all parts Stop. with click and. Okay, good. Have a seat. Very good. Very good. Nice. So I wanted you to know I wrote an email to Audrey Snyder, who's the arranger of this, and she wrote back, which is just so gratifying that these people are composers and arrangers who are still alive. She said, your group sounds like a lot of fun. Amazing that you have so many people signed up online. Well done, you. That means really well done, all of us. So warm wishes for the cold days ahead. So it was just, uh, it's just so great when people like, you know, say hello. Um, sometimes we think that, you know, composers and arrangers are somehow off in this mystical, inaccessible land, but they're actually, you know, they have to wake up and have breakfast and go for walks and let the dog out just like us, you know, they're just like regular people. So um, that's a lot of fun. So anything else on this one? We can certainly do it one or two more times just for your comfort level. And I know some of, I know uh, at least one of you is recording today. So um, the whole idea is to be comfortable. This is, this is a tricky chart, but you're, you're, you're looking mostly, oh, <laughs> yeah, I think she was. So um, it, that's always been one of my, one of my joys. I think maybe it, partly because I am a composer and arranger and I've met some composers and arrangers before. They're, um, they're just like regular folks. So it's uh it's just fun to fun to get to know them a little bit so good let's do it one more time you can stay seated this time but keep the joy um try to do one thing better than you did last time i don't care what it is just up your game and uh here we go this is patapan fantasia Full mix, all parts, with click and counting. One, two, one, two, three, four. Pan, pat pan pat 
to say I got some lit up faces that time so that was super fun so whatever you did that's a that's an A plus very good have a seat good unmute yourselves oh that's so much fun my goodness just want to say hello for a minute or two and then we'll go on to Wexford oh, good job good so so for those of you since I asked you to do at least one thing better that time what went better for you that time what did you consciously try to do better than you did the time before emotion engage my brain good <laughs> dynamics dynamics yeah we haven't talked about that a lot alto is when you've got the when she pulls that out of the texture that's really cool so i had a much smoother transition from four to five oh that's great yay well, the fun thing is, I mean, with a with a good piece of music, I've, I've found this in choral music and also very much with solo work, um, you can always do something better. I remember that I was reading about Pablo Casal, the fabulous, you know, Spat cellist who at age 93 was still practicing three hours a day. And someone asked him, why at age 93 are you still practicing three hours a day? And his response was, I think I'm beginning to see some improvement. <laughs> I feel I feel the same way. I'll be I'll be sixty next August, and you know, and there's always more stuff I can do with my voice. And you know, I, I, there's a messiah. Some of the bass messiahs from the art, uh, bass arias from the messiah. I try to just because I love singing them, and, and Baroque music, and music is pretty well suited for my, for my voice. So I just try to try to stay on top of that. There's always stuff I can do better. You know, more elegant phrasing, or there's a you know particular in. Um, There's one phrase that always kicks my tush. I've always wanted to do that better than the last time. So it's um it's just it's 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 fun to it's fun to, to want to push yourself, you know, gently, not 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 with flagellation, but um gent, gentle pushes is good. Gentle pushes are good. All right, let's go on to Wexford if there's nothing else on this one. Yeah, that's correct, Ellie. You do need to stay good enough after take 21. I hope you are not <laughs> Anyone takes any more? Oh, you've got your Messiah score. That's great, Ann. So, uh, John, Jonathan, yes, I was I was uh, trying to take a picture of my seven-year-old grandson about a couple of weeks ago, and he was giving me this deadly look over his mask, but he was having a good time. And I told him, I said, you know, our our music teacher says if you're having a good time, tell your eyes, and so that I can tell. So he, he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Never too, early, not, never too early or too late to learn that lesson. So I've probably played this for you before, but just in case, if you ever need something to laugh about for Patapan, here's, here's Patapan at double speed and up an octave. This is Patapan Fantasia. Full mix, all parts, with click and counting. One, two, one, two, three, four. 
before. <laughs> yeah, fun, fun things we can do with technology. So it's that, that's a, that's that's Willie and Robin and the Chipmunks, just in case. <laughs> That's, uh, that's their new debut. So, all right, let's go on to Wexford. Now, as they, as the Python people used to say, now for something completely different. So, good, 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 good. And, and I heard from Elaine Hagenberg too, this, this, this fabulous composer, arranger. Um, I told her early, I think it was in the late summer that we were programming this piece. She was really excited and happy. And um, so that's just, uh, that's just fun. All right. I think again on this one, probably the right thing to do. Uh, we don't need to slow it down. I want to do probably two full sing throughs just to get it back in our voices and our ears and then and then we'll take questions. Um, I'm going to conduct. Um, uh, there's a couple the, the the piece. of Yeah, I love it too, Dan. The, um, the, the piano. <laughs> gorgeous. There's also a version with string quartet and oboe and percussion, which is unbelievably beautiful. That's what sold me on the piece, actually. Um, and unfortunately, the demo recording of that was done in a really spacious acoustic, and it's too slow, really, to sing along online, I think, because the the, the phrasing and the breathing doesn't quite work with the tempo that we're working on. But if you ever want to just Google, you know, Elaine Hagenberg, Wexford Carroll, there's, a, there's a, an, an online recorded performance. It's drop dead gorgeous. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I really love this piece. And um, good. OK, so we don't have to do the whole introduction. We can pick it up um, toward the end of the first page just to save time. Saving time, what a strange concept that is. But anyway, um, here we go. So this is around the bottom of page two. Sopranos and altos, just come in when it's your time. I'll cue you. Top of page two here. One, three, go. Good people all this Christmas time, consider well and bear in mind what our good God for us has done in sending his beloved son. Good Day in Bethlehem upon that board, there was a blessed Messiah born. And there's the basses get ready, mezzo piano, very legato. One, there we go. Near Bethlehem, did shepherds keep their flocks of lambs and feet. For there you'll find this happy morn, a princely babe, sweet Jesus born. Look up before your next entrance because there's a slowdown in that bar. We want to make sure we're all synced up. Paul's counting it just to make sure we're all on the same page. Attending all the Lord of my life, who came 
all the way to the top, do it again. Do something better than you did last time and then we'll take questions. This is Wexford Carol, full mix, all parts, with click we'll and counting. We'll do the whole intro this time just because it's so pretty. Helps us get in the right mood. Questions. A couple tricky things in here, a couple tricky counting things, especially on page seven where the different parts, part, parts are kind of all doing their own thing. But 
Let me hear from you. Having finished Patty Pan, uh, what this is the one that you thought was the hardest in the beginning. What yeah. especially in it yeah. that you found hard that you thought was going to get to us? If you'll pardon me for putting that way. The leader changes on seven and eight. Those are really the ones yeah. that I felt like um, could really give us fits. It's not as hard as Patapan for sure, but still there are, um, you know, if there are places I can I can help, especially sopranos and altos, I can give you different places to breathe if that's useful. Um, you know, everybody has permission. Um, okay, that's good, Ellie. We can do that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, at the very end, on page eight, um, there are one or two places I don't want you to breathe, but the rest of page eight, please stagger breathe anywhere you have to, because there are some super long phrases, and you know I've got decent breath control, but I can't make it through some of these things all, without without taking a catch breath. The one place I do not want you to take a breath is between the word Messiah and the word born. You can breathe in the middle of Messiah, you can breathe in the middle of the born, but I'd really love to not hear, to, and to, to hear any Messiah born. That's just sort of like, oh, come on, we can, we can, we can, we can find some other place. That's like, that's the whole point of the piece. So if we can uh, connect Messiah to born, and um, uh, so that's at the, in the middle score, right before the double bar for all parts, and then sopranos and altos, to get to your last born. You can breathe during your last born because we have to hold that for six six counts. And tenors and basses, that's a really long note at the bottom of page eight, so take stagger breaths if you need to. And Peter, or, or if there are any basses who want to go down to the low note. Sweet Jesus born. At the very end, if you want to growl down there, that's a really a nice note. We don't get a note that often, very often. So um, good. Okay, so Ellie, you wanted to do any place where the tenors don't have melody, which is a great. There's there's a couple places. Let's look at page four tenors. I'll go ahead and mute everyone. Um, so uh, top of page four, last note, prepare and go. Go ahead and sing whatever part you're on, but I'm going to play the tenor part. Okay, one and breathe and go. Prepare and go. Do that again, tenors. One and breathe and go. Prepare and go. The angel said to Bethlehem, be not afraid. Do that with the basses, tenor and bass. Prepare and go. Other parts you're welcome to sing. One and breathe and go. Tenors and basses, top of page four. There are the other, there are the higher parts if you want. One and breathe and go. Good breath. Okay. Good. Now, good, great. Tenors, bottom of page five with thankful heart. Let me just play it, Florio. One. Two. tenors once more bottom of page five one and two and three and thankful heart and joyful mind the shepherds went the babe to find and as god's angels had foretold they did our Okay, how's that, tenors? That's okay. Let's go on. Okay, let's go on. Bottom of six within a manger. One and breathe and go.
let's go on. One, two, three, one, here we go. One, two, three, breath. Okay, super. What else you got? Sopranos and altos, are you okay on page seven? Lord of Life came to end, all that stuff. Charlotte, go ahead and unmute yourself. Let me know how I can help. I got lost on seven to eight. Yep, yep. So altos, what I would recommend is on page seven in the middle, after Lord of Life, take a breath. Sopranos, you should probably breathe after came to end because you have an eighth note rest there. But, but, but altos, if you breathe after Lord of Life, then your top of page seven sounds like this from attending on. Just listen. One, breathe, go. Attending on. Three, one. Lord of Life came to end. Okay, let's do that again, altos. Top of the page. Attending. One, sing, go. Good. Add the sopranos to that. Sopranos and altos, top of seven. One, attending, go. Three, one. four parts attending on top of seven one and breathe and go yeah is that better altos make a little more sense yeah could we do the soprano part uh, by itself right there please uh -oh. Yep, absolutely. Top of seven, attending on, sopranos. And what you might want to do, everyone, what you might want to do in the 4-4 four, four bar, which is the, the second bar of the second system, you might want to write one, two, three, four across the top. It's just, it's, um, it's a beautiful effect. She's really stretching time here, but it's just hard to stay on the train. You know, it's really easy to get off the track there. Okay, sopranos, attending on, top of seven. One, and breathe, and go. Attending on. Three, one. Lord of life came to end. Take a breath. Once more, uh, sopranos, exactly the same thing. Top of seven, attending on. One, two, go. Attending on. Three, one. Lord of life came to end. With yes. Now let's put the altos back in. The altos and sopranos really tend to throw each other off here. So we want to make sure everyone's synced up. Altos and sopranos together, attending on. Then we'll get tenors and basses back in. Top of seven. One. Breathe, go. Three, one. Okay. Add the tenders and basses back in. Top of, top of seven, attending on. One, breathe, go. Three, one. Better. Good. Troy, did you need anything there? Okay, Dan, what you got? Yeah, okay, the middle of page four, the final measure uh, where the word Bethlehem comes in, yes. and it's an eighth note triplet. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So what you need to do there, I'm, I'm laughing just because it's, it's kind of absurd the way it's notated. You really, the best thing to do is to think that you're singing the melody. 
to Bethlehem, be not afraid. That'll tell you where to put the sl of Bethlehem. Otherwise, it's a little awkward, okay? So, tenors, just count with me, page four. Actually, everyone, just, just, just count. I prepare and go. Top of page four, last note. One, speak, go. Prepare, prepare and go. The angel said, to who beheth lahem, be not afraid. So even if you're not singing all the, even if you're not changing pitches the way the sopranos are, if you think that you are, it'll get you in the right place. So, so, so sopranos and tenors, please. Prepare and go. One and breathe and go. Once more, once more, same thing. One and breathe and go. See what I'm talking about, Dan? Does that does that help at all? Good. It's a great question. It's a great question. Good. What else? Don't be shy. This is your time. I have a question, Jonathan. Yes, and that's in that exact same place where the, uh, the soprano start at the top yeah. end of the top, because you you have to jump up so high. I find myself sort of shrieking there, it, putting the emphasis on exactly the wrong place. Like and go is not the point of the sentence. I think it's like yeah, it's there. Okay. It's so this, this is a super great question that can't be asking because we all, we all have times in our singing when there's a high note that's like, oh my goodness, how do I, how do I possibly negotiate that? So one of the things I want to uh, encourage you to do is actually imagine that you're approaching that high note from above instead of low. Because it's easy to think, oh, I, I've got a, like this crazy leap of an octave or almost an octave. But you can fool yourself by thinking actually of the high E. So if you actually think, prepare and go, the angel said, then you actually won't put quite so much weight on the low prepare. So just, just try that. Everyone try singing the melody with the sopranos, but imagine that you're actually starting on the high note, even though you're not. One, breathe, go. What do you think? Does it help? Maybe, maybe not. Try it again. One, and breathe, and go. Let's try this whole second verse. Let's try putting that in context. Go back to context. Go back to page three. Near Bethlehem, tenors and basses get us started. It's also a little tricky, sopranos and altos, because you sort of have a cold start there, because you haven't sung for, I don't know, eight bars or whatever, and so all of a sudden, bing, you got to go up about as high as you get in this piece. So that's a little tricky. Okay, so this is about at the double bar at the middle of page three, where sopranos and altos finish the first verse. One, two, three, tenor, bass, here we go. Near Bethlehem did shepherds keep their flocks of lambs and feeding sheep, to whom God's angels did appear, which put the shepherds in great fear. Prepare For there you'll find this happy morn, a princely babe, sweet Jesus born. Yeah, how was that, Candy? It was. It was better, and I also took a bigger breath before I started, which also helped. Uh, yes, yes. What you said, good. That's great. 
That's great. Yeah. Anytime, anytime, any, any of you have like a, a line like this, it's just like, Ugh, how do I do that? Cause there are, there are lines like that. I mean, you know, composers do their best to hopefully to write singable lines, but every now and then there's a line that's just, it's just tricky to negotiate. Even the best composers <laughs> do that. So we have to, you know, if you've ever studied voice privately, you know, that this is, this is part of the, part of the teaching is to help you it's almost like surfing, you know, you have to you have to negotiate the wave of the contour of the line that you're given and do it with finesse and do it with your breath and figure out how to, you know, where to give, where to back off, how much to, you know, to use a car pedal, how how hard to press on the gas and when you have to put on the brakes and when you coast. Um, there are a lot of analogies about movement because singing is such a it's such a dynamic thing. There are always things happening, even in the middle of one long note. It's never the same at the end of the note as it was at the beginning of the note because of where it is in context. So um, I won't get too cosmic on you there, but it's um, it's one of the wonderful things about singing. It's always every time, every time through, every every time you breathe. It's a new it's a new day. It's a new opportunity to to refresh your technique and to stay engaged. And it's a it's really a mindfulness um, discipline in some ways. So um, does anybody have a birthday this week? By the way, speaking of mindfulness. No. All right. Let's stand up and sing this all the way through once more from the top and then um, probably call it a day. So this time through, I want to give you a visual image that may, may be helpful for you. Um, I want you to imagine that no one has ever told this story before. And it's your job to tell the story. So no one knows that, um, that the angel came and the shepherds went, that the angels appeared to the shepherds and they told the angels what they, that, that the, the angels said to the shepherds, you have to go to Bethlehem and that Jesus was born and put in a manger. Like imagine that no one has ever told this story before and you have to tell it to someone who's never heard it. So that's a thing. You know, it means we can't phone it in. We can't go on autopilot. We can't um, we can't imagine for a moment that what we sing doesn't matter. So sing sing with that sense and see if it does anything to your uh, to your sense of the song from the top. This is Wexford Carroll, full mix, all parts with click and counting.
Have a seat. Very nice. Ah. There's a gorgeous piece of music. It's sort of like, Dan, you were talking about before how pretty it is. There, there, there are pieces I've done in my life. Hopefully you've had this, this uh, nice experience as a singer. It's like every time you sing it, you find something new in it. And um, some of the Lauridsen pieces, um, the O Manu Mysterium and O Nata Lux and some of the others, like every time I, I, and, and I never cease to get, get goosebumps and to, um, and it just, it just lifts my heart. So this, this song is like that for me. So um, it's just good when you find one that's uh, it's like that. Okay, go ahead and unmute. You've done a great job today. Good singing. Um, I wish you well for those of you who are recording over the next couple of days. Jerry, it's so nice to have your cat with us. <laughs> That's so sweet. What's your cat's name? Ah, uh, this one is Mia. I, I, I think I think you've seen all three of them at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, <laughs> aren't you cute? Very nice. Well, Mosley's upstairs with Sandy, so he doesn't. Uh, he's kind. Of, he he loves his mom, so he doesn't. Uh, unless she's not here, I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't rank that high in the uh, <laughs> social hierarchy of our house. So, um, he, he wants to be up there all the time. So yeah, he's 10. He's a sweet little boy. So yeah, very good. So anything, anything else going on? Yes, Leslie, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to share an experience I had. Um, last night, I went to see Paradise Square at the Nederlander Theater. It's a pre-Broadway performance. And, you know, so there's Broadway stars that are in Chicago testing this out. And <clears throat> it's, you know, that they're, they're all very talented. It's very high energy, lots of dance, you know, it's sort of a combination of Irish and, you know, Juba dancing um, and singing. But the, what I wanted to share was in this, in the last, the last uh, song before the finale, the star of the show, a, a woman by the name of, you know, I can hardly say this name, Joaquina Kalukanga, Congo. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. Anyway, she's singing this song and the, it's called oh Let God. It Burn. And, and the last note of it, she's holding for so long. I'm thinking, oh my God, I would have had to breathe at least twice there. <laughs> and then she modulates to another note and keeps singing. And she practically got a standing ovation for that note. Ooh. I mean, it was like the crowd was crazy wild about it. And then when she was done with her song, you know, it was a very emotional, you know, like heart wrenching song. She just held it while this applause just rained over her. And it just sort of, you know, made me think of all the things that you tell us about, you know, like just holding the moment and, you know, the, it was just incredible. I said to my husband, I said, that was worth the price of admission, that mm -hmm. note. And he said, and she did it twice today because, you know, we went in the evening and she'd done a matinee. So if you have a chance to see this, listen for the note. It's oh. unbelievable. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Wow, that's great. That's great. Okay, I'm inspired. Thanks. <laughs> okay, everyone, have a great week. Thank you all for doing. Great. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Really take care. Thank you. You too. Enjoy the sunset. Okay. Bye bye.